Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. We have exciting news for you today. We are welcoming a new brand to the Sweetwater family. Dan Electro is coming on board, and we have Steve Ridinger here from uh, from Thank Dan Electro. You're thanks the man for himself, me. right? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, what an iconic brand. It's an amazing brand. Yeah. All the way back to 1947, right? Yeah. Nat Daniels is a brilliant guy. Yeah. 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 So tell us a little bit about the story. The uh, the company uh, was was active through the '60s, and you came back uh, in the '90s, right? So Nat Daniels was an amp guy mm -hmm. and made some fantastic amps uh, under the Dan Electra brand in the '50s and so forth. But uh, uh, he got a contract with Sears Roebuck in the '60s, or actually the '50s. He made 100% of all the electric guitars and amps that Sears sold, hmm. and the numbers were staggering. And he would fill a box car every day, a railroad car with a product from the factory there in New Jersey. And a uh, great innovator, he came up with the idea of the, the body construction of the Dan Electro, which is two you know, flat hardboard pieces, top and bottom, pressured laminated to a, a wood frame, a lot of hollow inner chambers, so there's a lot of body resonance. Mm -hmm. And then of course the lipstick pickup, the Max Factor factory was just down the road from him in New Jersey making brass lipstick tubes for women's lipstick, and so he, decided that would be a good housing for his pickup. He had an Al Nico Magnet in his wind and he would put it in that tube and it's just incredibly different tone that no other guitar has. So right. between the body construction and the pickup, it's responsible for a lot of the Dan Electra Mystique, the tone and vibe and everything that it has. Right, right. Then when you, uh, uh purchased company or mm -hmm. purchased the, uh, the brand and brought it back in the 90s, you were mainly focused on pedals at that time, right? Exactly right. So what, what, to, to finish the story of the original Dan Electro is 1968 MCA Universal, the record uh, movie company, bought uh, Dan Electro. And very soon thereafter, they lost their contract with Sears, which was mm. a big chunk of business. As a result, they're losing money. MCA said, we didn't buy this to lose money. They closed it a year later. So in 1994, I had the idea to make some new pedals, and I wanted to buy a vintage brand name to put on the pedals. And so this, of course, is before the web, and the place I was looking was that in L.A. there was a newspaper called The Recycler where musicians would trade gear. Right. And so I got a copy of that, and I spread the pages all over the floor of my house, and I'm looking at every single brand. And there were a lot of brands that were dormant then that have since come back, things like Supro and Standell and Magnetone, many, there were so many brands that were at that time inactive. Right. So I went through all that and I finally landed on Dan Electra. I said, that's it, that's the one we want. So we got hold of the trademark owner, we bought the name, and then the January 97 trade show, we launched the first Dan Electra pedals. And the reaction was great, we were selling a lot, and Dan Electra has gone on to sell 1.5 million pedals. I think it was wow. one of the higher uh, quantity companies out there. Anyway, so the surprising thing, everybody at the show said, where's the guitars? Right. I had never planned to make the guitars. So we got busy in January 98. We came to the NAMM show and we launched the first Dan Electric guitars that had been on the market in 30 years. And the reaction was crazy good. So we just had lines of dealers around the booth and we couldn't even leave the booth to eat and so forth. So we sold about 10,000 guitars. And then all that year we're trying to keep up Mm -hmm. and there were, I, I personally know of two fist fights in retail stores where there's one guitar left and two guys wow. <laughs> wanted it. It was that kind of crazy thing. So fast as we get them in, we, we would ship them out. And so that year we shipped over 100,000 guitars. So crazy. it was just a crazy story. So for the first, uh, you know, from 98 till 2014 or so, all we did is reissue the old guitars from Dan Electra back catalog. But then along about 2014, 15, we said, well, let's do something different. So. Mm -hmm. One of the directions we did was we took the old Moserite, which I always loved, the offset horn and the German carved top, and we said, let's, let's redo that in, 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 well. There were some other reissues, personally, I didn't think were that great, but let's really do it well, and let's put Dan Electra Twists on it. So we did that, and we had a great reaction. We started getting calls from artists like Joe Perry and Ronnie Wood and so forth. So uh, we kind of struck a nerve there. It was a new direction for us. Mm -hmm. But the old uh, catalog models still sell. They, they developed the first electric 12 string, electric baritone, the sitar, and so forth. So uh, we stayed with a lot of that. Uh, we did a resonator. Interesting, because the resonator, Dan Electro never made it. But some people took old Dan Electros and uh, made a Frankenstein resonator out of it. We decided to go that direction. Right. And we got a high output. And the problem with a lot of the resonators, as you know, is the output of the, the piezo is so low. You have to right. preamp or something. So Les Shatton in Canada made us a really high output uh, piezo. We coupled that with a lipstick pickup and then a blend knob so you can find the sweet spot between the two tones. And uh, 
Hozier's planet, and mm -hmm. it, it found some good acceptance. So, so Dan Electro, it, it's 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 kind of a specialty brand in the sense that we're often not the player's main guitar, but that's fine right. with us, right? Because we fill some of these other uh, niches very well. Like we, I think we have the best sounding electric 12, best sounding electric baritone, and so forth. So for those specialty needs, uh, we're there. And I think right. that's part of our appeal. So, yeah. yeah, it's certainly part of the arsenal of every studio player. Yes. You have yeah. to have the Dan yeah. Electro baritone and you know, even the Longhorn yeah. bass. Yes. You know, those, it's such a distinctive tone. I got a story in Longhorn bass. So uh, the Who were recording My Generation in London. Mm -hmm. And they had, uh, and twist, so he, had the, he had the Longhorn bass. He broke a string. There were no other short scale bass strings in London. So they had to go out and buy a second Longhorn. He broke another string. It took three Longhorns to finish that song. Oh, really? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never heard that one before. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, uh, you actually have a history even before that, right? You launched your first company at like 19 years old. Well, actually a little earlier. So right? when I was 14, I designed a fuzz box and started selling it to friends at school. And then I later, the next year, I got some distributors. And I was in a couple hundred stores nationally, maybe. And during high school, I sold about uh, 2,000. <laughs> uh, my little fuzz boxes. So I wanted to skip college and then uh, start a pedal company. My parents said, no way, Jose. So I found myself uh, in the 70s at University of uh, USC in Los Angeles. So I was there and I lasted about a semester and I dropped out at age 18 to start Fox Pedals in North Hollywood, California. Mm -hmm. And we're known for the tone machine and uh, you know some other things. But sure. uh, So that was the first thing. And then in the 80s, I brought the Aryan Pedals to the U.S. and did the Gorilla Amp. That was uh, something we developed. And in the 90s, uh, we got into the Dan Electro thing. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's an amazing and then career. in 2010, uh, we launched the Snark Tuner. So, yeah. Right, yeah, right, so. yeah. All right, right, yeah. absolutely. So one of the, uh, as you mentioned, one of the distinctive factors of the Dan Electros is those lipstick pickups. Yes, yes. Talk a little bit about those pickups. I mean, you, you mentioned yeah. kind of how they came to be, but what yeah. is the appeal with those? Well, sonically, it's just so different. And I think it's a combination of the tube and, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's a, it's a lower output, lower impedance pickup, mm -hmm. and they're series wired. And, uh, and so I think that uh, it, just, it just has a completely different character than other uh, than other pickups, and of course Jimmy Page seized on it in the Zep, early Zep days, and and so that, that really helped the awareness of Dan Electro. I think so. Right, right. So are there particular models that you find that players are gravitating toward? Do they? Uh, does everybody want to have that Jimmy Page? Model? Yeah, that's really our number one seller, that double cutaway model. Uh -huh. And uh, but like I say, a lot of the specialty models, like the twelve string or the baritone, or those are. Uh, you know, not as big, but but important sellers for us. Yeah. Right, right. And you're still making pedals. Yes. As well, mm -hmm. you have some vintage style. We pedals We just that launched you're doing? two new pedals, and uh, guitar player just ranked us of all the pedals launched in 2019, which is I don't know it's got to be over 10 million. No, but <laughs> there's like so that, many yeah. pedals. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the, out of 24 they picked, we got two slots. Uh huh. And so uh, the first one, the Eisenhower Fuzz, that's based on the old Super Fuzz. Uh, late 60s pedal, and uh, if you can find one of those at like $1,000 or something. Uh, but uh, we added a, a, a boost circuit, which uh, made the harmonic sweeter and brought the octave out more prominently. Mm -hmm. And we added EQ, which the original one didn't have. So it's kind of like a super fuzz on steroids, you could say. And then the other one was the breakdown pedal. And this was a pedal that Jimmy Page used to record the first Zep album in 68. And then this pedal just like floated off the radar, and, and mm -hmm. I, I got hold of one of these a year or so ago. I started talking to players. No one had ever heard of it, yeah. heard it, whatever. So uh, they're about 1,500 if you can find one. Right now, the, I can't find one anywhere. But anyway, so the beauty of this pedal is the six-position selector switch, which uh, hits the front of the amp increasingly harder to create this break up in the front of the amp. So it's very organic sounding as opposed to a distortion box where it's all happening in the pedal. This is all happening in the front of the amp. It's very organic sounding. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we're developing it, we took the six position selector. We said, well, let's just replace that with a rotary control. We lost the mojo. Hmm. Whoever designed this thing originally, those six positions are just magic. The first three you can leave on all the time for like a texture. And then the next three hit the amp increasingly hard, so it's really strongly overdriven. So Joe Perry's got one on his board. A lot of the Nashville guys starting to do it. So we've just been shipping since April, April May, but it's 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 starting to catch fire. So yeah, all right, right, yeah. very cool. 
Mm-hmm. One of the things I like about the, the the kind of new models that you've been coming mm-hmm. out with is the way you're doing the double lipstick, yes. uh, the humbucker yeah. version. Is that to increase? I mean, obviously it's humbucking, but uh, what, what happens with the tone with that? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Well, first, we found this combination of the P90 and the uh, and the lipstick humbucker, but it's kind of magic. It's just got this magic tone. But uh, the, the beauty of the humbucker, uh, and we, by the way, all of our humbuckers have a pull-on tone knob for a coil tap. So with with both lipsticks, you get nice output and a lot of twang and all that. But if you want uh, to use just one in combination with the P90, you still have a, a very different tone, especially in the 12-string. a completely different tone with one tube in the in the bridge rather than tube. So, so it gives you a lot of... A lot of tone possibilities, but you're right. You get a lot more output, which is one of the issues with the lipstick. It's a it's a lower impedance, lower output pickup, and so it's not like a strap pickup or something. So to get more output, the two of them really does the job. So yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I have to caution our, our viewers because. The problem with these guitars is that they're addictive. <laughs> so you get the double cutaway, and then you yeah. want the 12 string, and then you yeah. want the baritone, and then you want yeah. the. Uh, well, the nice <laughs> thing about our line is most of our guitars are 4.99 or less. So. Right. It's a, and the other thing, you know, it's kind of an incremental purchase. It's not like, do I buy the Les Paul or the Dan? By all means, buy the Les Paul and then get the Dan Electro because it, it really offers you something you can't get any other place. Right. So, yeah. yeah, if you want that sound, you've got to have the right. Dan Electro yeah. to get it. Right. Yeah. Steve, thanks so much for sitting down with us. We're Thank you. We're uh, excited to have Dan Electro here. They're such cool guitars. We're glad to be on board with Sweetwater. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure to see thanks you. Thanks so much. Thanks Thank a you. lot. And thank you for joining me here for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects. We'll be making lots of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher.